Africa stands alone in its vastness and musical variation. From indigenous ceremonial music to fusions of African and Western genres, Due to westernization, hereditary music is evolving, changing, and even being lost, as more people leave their small communities to find work in towns and cities. With a shared passion for earthy music and rich culture, we set out to document and preserve African traditions. Recording Africa was initiated in 2010, a non-profit traveling record label. Our aim, to sustain musicians and communities recorded with resources, creating a fair exchange on both sides. With much enthusiasm and the support of backers and donors, over £3,000 was raised and the dream became a reality. In January 2012, we embarked on a research project and social enterprise that studied and documented the musical traditions of Senegal. After driving up from Banjal Airport to the Senegalese capital of Dakar, we were welcomed by our contact Sheikh and his family. Shortly after that, he introduced us to his friend and trip advisor, Aristide. Today we go to Dakar, and then down to the, the top of the national park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Stay, stay around here. here. Uh, yeah, one night. One night. Yeah, aquí seguro el el chico que os voy a poner en contacto tengo mínimo cinco personas aquí que ya les daré los contactos de todo y os llevarán el pueblo hasta frontera de Guinea si queréis toda esta zona lo puedes hacer. Our route was outlined, but before leaving Dakar, there was much to see. Sheikh, who guided us around the capital, insisted we visit the former slave trade island, Gore. And on the ferry over, we met our first musician, the Kashaka salesman. As we walked around, we found it hard to link the island's tranquil nature to its horrendous past. We followed the sound of a guitar echoing from the old colonial walls to find painter and musician Mucho. Jambolo, this peace. Uh, everybody like peace because the inside for peace, for everybody have the have the the the, the necessity for him. Jambolo, jambolo, jambolo mi pala, jambolo da bere. Following some initial car problems, we embarked on a two-day journey from Dakar to Kedegu, a small town in the southeast of Senegal. Upon our arrival, guide and translator Sheikh Diallo went through our itinerary and instantly knew where to go. We drove out of town and hiked to the mountainous Bidik capital, Iwo. Children are just arriving, and uh, hopefully, you'll be welcomed into the village. But now we're just sitting outside Jan Batista's house, which is the chief of the village, and we're going to chat to him inside about uh, the exchange we want to do and see if he's okay with it. 
Estaba muy feliz de veros a su Estamos muy contentos. Estamos muy contentos. We're about to see inside the school to see what kind of things they've got in there, if they've got any paper, if they've got books, pens, anything like that. And then we're going to go visit the medical centre, but he's already told us that they've got nothing. They come to school Monday to Friday. Uh, today is their off day. This is the medical centre here, and as you can see, there's nothing apart from grain and uh, seeds. Um, and they've not had any medicines in here for a long time. Nunca los españoles han volvido para llevar, para traer medicamentos, camas para los los la gente que está, está enfermo nunca han volvido nunca 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 so I can't believe that like they, the NGO came they built they helped build this with the village and promised all these medicines and they never came back so it's never been a medical center ever the ideas what it came for they were just ideas it's never happened like and it's just a shame that we can't do more okay, uh, we need to get some volveremos some. ahora la, la. You see how it is here now, it's very poor. But everyone's happy and it's their way of life. So, yeah, I'm feeling good, but you know, it's hard to take everything in. Hopefully it all sounds really good, we don't know if it's so loud, but we all start dancing like this, an old woman who was like 108 years old came 108 up. years old. And as a customer, everyone gives her coins, like, and so for her to re like recall her, her like life stories in her head, and she sings about them like in contrast with everyone else, it's insane. But now they don't want to stop, everyone they just want to carry on and carry on. The Pasari country is situated between Senegal and Guinea Bissau, with the Cholo acting as a gateway for outsiders, or as they say in Senegal, Chubabs. At the foot of the Salamata Hills, we set up our equipment and recorded the traditional music of the Pizarro. Returning from deep within the countryside, we made our way back to Kedugu. En route, Sheikh had a surprise, an unplanned visit to Natcha village, home to a prevalent part of Senegal's population, the Fula people. We just come into this community at a time when they were building the road for the 4x4, four four, so we're kind of excited everyone, and all the kids are running after us and leaving their 
the duties of rebuilding the road, so I'm bad about that. And then this guy right next to us is getting quite annoyed about it. He's like, go back, go back, get back to work. Sombra. They're really happy with the exchange and they do everything they can for us to. Perfecto. They're now about to sign the uh, little contracts that we kind of made up and then we're going to go into the town and get the things then come back and record the music and uh, give them the uh, supplies that they've asked for. I think at the moment they've asked for soap, salt, medical supplies, rice um, and stuff for the school. We agreed on stuff, now we're heading back to Kedigu to charge our batteries. We're going to have something to eat and then we're going to go uh, to the shops and buy all the things that we, the community asked for. Okay, we were going to tell the communities that if there is any of the medication here that they don't know how to use or don't know what it is, they need to either uh, read the instructions or come here and contact the pharmacy. I think we've actually got quite a lot for not a hell of a lot of money. It's more than I expected to get anyway. You can get this much in England for sure for the amount of money we just spent. So thanks to everyone who donated, we've spent maybe like maybe like 160 pounds on all, all this stuff, and we've got like three mosquitoes. As I said, like everything. <laughs> Market days were a common factor for each village. We shop locally, and thanks to donations, equal amounts were bought for every community. <laughs> if you can see everything that we have, and the roof is full, we've got soap, we've got salt, we've got onions, we've got books, we've got Maggie, we've got lamps, we have so much stuff, so it's been a really good shop, we've had to do it in such quick time because we have to now go back to the community to record before the light goes, um, and then hopefully have a bit of fiesta with them. So yeah, everything went well. Très bien, I'm very happy. Our journey led us to the northern colonial city of Saint Louis, where by chance we met with the organizers of a Talibay school, Espoir Les Enfants. 
Over the next couple of days, they took us around the schools and reflected on the children's harsh reality. Half the walls are knocked down. And this room here is where the children are expected to sleep. Again, no roof, just rags. And if you look at the floor, I mean, how anyone is sleeping on this is just beyond me, like... It's horrible. We want to build a roof for somewhere, so for us to build a roof here, we'd have to make sure that this floor was clean as well, because I just can't... There's no point in putting a roof up when still, when there's just the kids' backs are just getting completely ruined by this floor surface. There's 43 children who live in this area, in this, in this house. Underneath here, and in that small room there. There's 43 of them. We thought it was 14, but 43 of them. What did the government do? What, what, what the government do, me, I, uh, I can't say nothing. nothing. You know why? You know why? why? Because uh, uh, he don't, uh, we have no politic to, uh, a government politic to organize this school. And the, the government, they know that this exists? No. They know. Yeah, they he know. know. He yeah. knows this reality. He knows this reality. But he, he do nothing. Horrified by these conditions and with no immediate plans to record a community, the donations were used where they were sorely needed. After building the roof and delivering the supplies, we arranged to record the Talibé Choir on the beach. Initially, an ensemble of popular musicians were organised. Unfortunately, they didn't show. The sun was setting and time was ticking. We set up for what we thought would be a compilation of school songs, but chaos ensued. We're trying to get them to sing, but I think this will be difficult.
Where Children running everywhere. What do I think? I don't know. But we got some music from the children. Thoughts running round in my head. Sunset going down. That's what I said. <laughs> Because music is a, like a school. Every day you have to study. Every day you are studying. If you play still now, already, next time, when you listen to that, that cassette, you can get something there. And in way you go into outside, you have to get something in the different, different music. When you come, you make it one other one for you. Our time archiving the music of Senegal was coming to an end, but the infamous rhythms and dancing of the Surya people could not be missed. Following the advice of our guide Jack, resources were obtained and delivered to the vibrant villages of Tassigreen. As far as the response goes for the aids, these guys have definitely been the most um, thanking and, and warming. And it was incredible. And there's, there's a huge amount of respect here in the village. You can see that it's quite a large area and they're split up into lots of sub uh, villages. And we've just been thanked by every individual leader of every sub village. How do you say thank you? Thank uh, you. As people migrate to developing towns, the music illustrated in this film slowly expires. In its wake, fusions of traditional and western genres emerge. Throughout our time in Senegal, we encountered and organized meetings with many contemporary musicians. In one of the poorest areas in Dakar, we met with the three-piece hip-hop group Benin Squad. Unlike Benin Squad, who dedicate their lives to hip-hop, the artist Picasso freestyles in five different languages, just for fun. Break center rock, center rock, so my rounds they break the rock. Jarsa abdomen, then you see cut sir, cut cut. Jeho gul fog mu cut sir, con cut cut. Jeho gul fog mu cut sir. Ayo microphone. As word of our project spread, we found ourselves spending a few evenings with Senegal's popular musicians. First and foremost, Bidio Boubes. No, it's not about coming. 
culture, African vibes, don't forget men, where you come from. It's, it's our way, we make a combination of uh, Africa and African music. Mm -hmm. And traditional mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. and, and all the music. Yeah, all the music. If I say all the music, music of the world. Mm -hmm. Like England music, American music, or whatever. All music. Yeah. Yes, it's important to make bridge. De le transmettre, jamais. Pour moi, ça parce que chaque individu a sa culture. Donc, nos traditionnels, le malheur là, c'est notre culture. Mais c'est à nous maintenant de le prendre en main et d'essayer de le faire pour que, voilà, c'est ça. Africa stands alone in its vastness and musical variation. The project took us on a trip of a lifetime. We had front row seats to the best concerts in the world, and we achieved our goals. But it doesn't end here. Recording Africa will continue preserving incredible music by supporting the communities and musicians who produce it. Voilà, donc c'est un très bon projet. Si vous avez pu élargir ce monde de musique traditionnelle qui est en voie de disparition, surtout. Vous avez eu une très très bonne idée, moi je pense que revoir, chercher de la musique africaine, ça c'est très important parce qu'il y a peu de monde qui cherche ça. C'est ce genre d'échange que le pays peut changer, que y a plus, on vient d'ici, il y, y a des frontières, il y a des choses. Donc c'est ça qui fait l'union et l'union pour moi ça fait la force. Déjà ce que vous avez fait, vous avez pu être en contact avec les populations, donc diverses ethnies, et chaque ethnie ayant sa culture que vous avez pu euh, retrouver. Vous avez été curieux de dire que nous, on cherche de la musique traditionnelle. Tradition, instrument traditionnel, tout traditionnel. Ça, c'est une bonne pensée. Et donc, c'est vous, vous, vous avez voulu faire revivre encore le monde qui veut, qui est en voie de, de partir. Non, la musique, c'est pas juste la musique que nous connaissons. Il faut aller au fin fond, creuser une partie encore peut-être de l'Afrique, voir où est-ce qu'on peut voir une musique qui est en voie de disparition que les gens n'écoutent quasiment pas. Pour moi, ce que, ce que, ce que j'ai à dire, là vraiment, c'est un remerciement devant le gros Baba ici, un remerciement de, 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 de le travail qu'on a travaillé dans les quatre jours, que leur travail avance. Comme ils ont avancé pour venir nous donner des, des échanges. Recording music as a traveling record label is ideal for many of these villages that need help. However, to create sustainable development, Recording Africa needs to develop too. Profits from donations and sales are put towards the next communities visited. The crew is externally funded and the entire Recording Africa team works only for the gratification of helping musicians and their families. Be a part of the musical movement.